All right, 9.3 uh, communication rules definitions. Some words and phrases have special meanings when talking about hazardous materials. Some of these may differ from meanings you are used to. The words and phrases in this section may be on your test. The meanings of other important words are in the glossary at the end of section 9. A materials hazard class reflects the risks associated with it. There are nine different hazard classes. So this table, uh, the, the different classes have the risks associated with them, like class 1's explosives, while cl uh, class 2 are gases, flammable, non-flammable, poisonous, toxic. Class 3, flammable or combustible liquids, you see? Explosives for one, gases for two, liquids for three. Um, so a materials hazard class reflects the risks associated with it. There are nine different hazard classes. The types of materials included in these nine classes are in figure 9.1. Notice there's a tenth down here, but those are food flavorings and medicines. So those are may not be hazardous, but they're controlled. See? other regulated materials. So they're regulated or controlled, but they're not necessarily hazardous. Um, by the way, I'll go over this table in detail at the end of the video because it'll be a little long and you may want to click to the next video at that point. You may not want to listen to me go over this whole table. All right. Um, all right, so under definitions, a shipping paper describes the hazardous materials as being transported. Shipping orders, bills of lading, and manifests are all shipping papers. Figure 9.6 shows an example of a shipping paper. So this is 9.6 right here. After an accident or hazardous material spill or leak, you may be injured and unable to communicate the hazards of the materials you are transporting. Firefighters and police can prevent or reduce the amount of damage or injury at the scene if they know what hazardous materials are being carried. Your life and the lives of others may depend on quickly locating the shipping papers. For that reason, the rules require. Okay, so, I mean, suppose this is a gas that makes you pass out. When they come on the scene of the accident, they need to be able to identify what it is. So there's a good reason why they want the placards and the papers and everything to be the right way. So when they look for your shipping papers, here are the rules for how those are held. Okay. So the shippers are required to describe hazardous materials correctly and include an emergency response telephone number on the shipping papers, except as provided by 49 CFR 604 parentheses C. Um, so I guess this describes the uh, the exceptions are in 49 CFR 604 C. Okay, so a driver of a motor vehicle containing hazardous materials shall ensure that the shipping paper is readily available and recognizable to authorities in the event of accident or inspection. The shipping paper shall be distinctly tabbed, placed on top of the other shipping documents, or placed in the pocket of the driver's door. Emergency response information must accompany the shipping papers and shall be kept in the same manner as the shipping papers. So uh, my guess is if you ever get a DOT inspection, they're going to check to see that your shipping papers are, are tabbed, placed on top of other shipping documents, or placed in the pocket of your, uh, of your door. 
and that there is emergency response information with the shipping papers kept in the same manner as they are. Also, drivers um, to keep are to keep hazardous material shipping papers in a pouch on the driver's door or in clear view within reach while the seat belt is fastened while driving. So if your window is next to another DOT window, they expect you to be able to reach for those papers while in your seat belt. Um, so, or on the driver's seat when you're out of the vehicle. So if you get out of that vehicle, it says here that those papers should be um, on your seat. So in a pouch in the door or in clear view within immediate reach while the seatbelt is fastened or on the driver's seat when you're out of the vehicle. Um, package labels. Shippers put diamond-shaped hazard warning labels on most hazardous materials packages. These labels inform others of the hazard. If the diamond label won't fit on the package, shippers may put the label on a tag securely attached to the package. For example, compressed gas cylinders that will not hold a label will have tags or decals. Labels look like the examples in figure 9.2. So these are the labels. Notice how the placards look similar to the labels. 9.3.3 lists of regulated products. Placards. Placards are used to warn others of hazardous materials. Placards are signs put on the outside of a vehicle and on bulk packages, which identify the hazard class of the cargo. A placarded vehicle must have at least four identical placards. They are put on the front, rear, and both sides of the vehicle. Placards must be readable from all four directions. They are at least 10.8 inches square, square on point, in a diamond shape. Cargo tanks and other bulk packaging display the identification number of their contents on placards or orange panels or white square on point displays that are the same size as placards. Okay. So cargo tanks and other bulk packaging display the identification number. So here they go into identification numbers. Identification numbers are a four-digit code used by first responders to identify hazardous materials. So like if you pass out and they need to figure out what that is, th that four-digit code is going to be important for them to look that up. So an identification number may be used to identify more than one chemical. The letters NA or UN will precede the identification number. The United States Department of Transportation's Emergency Response Guidebook, ERG, Emergency Response Guidebook, lists the chemicals and the identification numbers assigned to them. There are three main lists used by the shippers, carriers, and drivers when trying to identify hazardous materials. Before transporting a material, look for its name on three lists. Some materials are on all lists, others are on only one. Always check the following lists. Section 172.101, the hazardous materials table. Appendix A to Section 172.101, the list of hazardous substances and reportable quantities. Appendix B to Section 172.101, the list of marine, of marine pol uh, pollutants. So the three lists are all involved Section 172.101. Uh, the actual section, Appendix A and Appendix B. The hazardous materials table. Figure 9.4 shows part of the hazardous materials table. Column 1 tells which shipping mode or modes the entry affects and other information concerning the shipping description. 
The next five columns show each material's shipping name, hazard class or division, identification number, packing group, and required labels. So this is an example of a hazardous materials table. Notice it's from that 172.101 that they talked about. Um, up here, cargo tanks and bulk packaging display the identification number. Identification numbers are those four digit codes. And those codes apparently appear on these tables. You see UN1841? That's a four digit code. And the two letters that go before it um, is either NA or UN. And in this example here, they're using UN. Maybe that'll help you when you're looking at the tables, right? So um, let's see. So the five columns show the shipping name, hazard class or division, identification number, packing group, and required labels. So you can see that here. Six different symbols may appear in column one of the table. So this is column one. In this case, you have an A. A means the hazardous material described in column two is subject to the HMR only when offered or intended for transport by air unless it is a hazardous substance or hazardous waste. All right, so let me go back. Plus shows the proper shipping name hazard class and packing group to use even if the material doesn't meet the hazard class definition. Um, A uh, uh, intended for transport by air unless it is a hazardous substance or hazardous waste. W means the hazardous uh, W up here means the hazardous material described in column 2 is subject to the HMR only when offered or intended for transportation by water unless it is a hazardous substance, hazardous waste, or marine pollutant. So notice this column one affects apparently how column two is interpreted. D means the proper shipping name is appropriate for describing materials for domestic transportation but may not be proper for international transportation. Ah, so I see column one. Uh, notice it's tr there's transport by air, transport by water, and then um, may not be proper for international transportation. I identifies a proper shipping name that is used to describe materials in international transportation. A different shipping name may be used when only domestic transportation is involved. G means this hazardous material described in column 2 is a generic shipping name. A generic shipping name must be accompanied by a technical name on the shipping paper. A technical name is a specific chemical that makes the product hazardous. So you see it could be confusing if you have a generic and a technical name and they're both referring to the same thing. So apparently this G will clue you into that situation. So this affects column two and it, if it gives you information on different shipping methods, you know, that's related to this substance. Column two lists the proper shipping names and descriptions of regulated materials. Entries are in alphabetical order so you can more quickly find the right entry. The table shows proper shipping names in regular type. The shipping paper must show proper shipping names. Names shown in italics are not proper shipping names. So again, if it's in italics, it's not considered a proper name. So, you know, there are different names for a lot of things. Column three, see there's a number there, hazard class or division shows the materials hazard class or division or the entry forbidden. Never transport a forbidden material. Placard shipments based on the quantity and hazard class. So you placard them based on the quantity and hazard class. You can decide which placards to use if you know these three things. 
So you come up on a load and you got to know what placards go on there. Well, here are the three ways that you determine that. By the materials hazard class, the amount being shipped, and the amount of all hazardous materials of all classes on your vehicle. So the particular hazard class, the amount of a particular material, and then the total amount of all the materials. Column 4 lists the identification number for each proper shipping name. Identification numbers are preceded by the letters UN or NA. The letters NA are associated with proper shipping names that are only used within the United States and to and from Canada. The identification number must appear on the shipping paper as part of the shipping description and also appear on the package. It also must appear on cargo tanks and other bulk packaging. Police and firefighters use this number to quickly identify the hazardous materials. PG. Column 5 shows in Roman numerals the packing group, PG, assigned to a material. A PG is not assigned to materials in classes 2 and 7. Uh, I will go over classes that's up here in a little bit. Here, 2 uh, relates to gases, 7 radioactive. See, we're in uh, all right, five. So um, shows in Roman numerals the packing group assigned to materials and classes uh, two um, and seven, division six point two and ORMD six point two. 6.2 is infectious substances. Packing group numerals correspond to the degree of danger presented by the material. One is great. Um, one one or II like Roman numeral that's 2 is medium, and III, or R Roman numeral 3, is minor. So 1 is great, 2 is medium in danger, 3 is a minor danger. So, so the lower the number, the greater the, the danger. All right, column 6 shows the hazard uh, label codes. Shows the hazard warning label or labels. Shippers must put on packages of hazardous materials. Some products require use of more than one label due to a dual hazard being present. Column 7 lists codes for the additional or special provisions that apply to this material. So label codes and then special provisions. All right, so column 7 lists codes for the additional special provisions that apply to this material. When there is an entry in this column, you must refer to the federal regulations for specific information. Well, if you have to refer to the federal regulations, you're going to have to have them available. The meaning and requirements of special provisions are set forth in 49 CFR 172.102. The numbers 1 through 6 in this column mean the hazardous material is a poison inhalation hazard, PIH, poison inhalation hazard. PIH materials have special requirements for shipping papers, marking, and placards. Column 8 is a three-part column showing the section numbers in 49 CFR 173 that cover the packaging requirements for each hazard material. Note, columns 9 and 10 do not apply to transportation by highway. Let's 
you. Exceptions, non-bulk, and bulk. Three-part column that cover the packaging requirements for each hazardous material. Appendix A to 49 CFR once, uh, okay, so I'm going to hold off. I'm going to do Appendix A uh, in the next video. Let's look at this chart up here. Hazardous materials classes this is the last part of this video is talking about this table if you want to fast forward. All right, so hazardous materials class, class one covers explosives, class two gases, three liquids, um, four is solids, five oxidizers, six poison and biological, seven's radioactive, eight is corrosives, nine are miscellaneous hazardous things, and then ORMD are things that may not be quite hazardous, but they are still regulated uh, for some reason. Um, okay. So, uh, class 1.1, explosives, an example is dynamite. Uh, class 1, division 2, explosives example of that is flares class one division three explosives display fireworks class one well let me do this 1.1 explosives dynamite 1.2 explosives example is flares 1.3 explosives example is display fireworks. 1.4 explosives example is ammunition. 1.5 explosives example is blasting agents. 1.6 explosives example is explosives devices. But all of class 1 falls under different types of explosives. Class 2 Let's do, uh, do it the same way. 2.1, flammable gases, an example is propane. 2.2, non-flammable gases, an example is helium. 2.3, division, you know, class 2, division 2.3, poisonous toxic gases, example is fluorine that is compressed. So in class 2, we see this generally has gases in it one explosives, two gases. Three, class three, has liquids. Flammable liquids uh, in class three, an example is gasoline. Combustible liquids in class three, an example is fuel oil. Uh, class four, so we do it by division. 4.1, flammable solids, example, ammonium picrate wetted. 4.2, spontaneously combustible. An example is white phosphorus. 4.3, dangerous when wet. An example is sodium. Okay, so we have class 1 explosives, 2 gases, 3 liquids, 4 is solids, 5 involves, uh, let's see, so class 5, we'll do it by divisions, 5.1 is oxidizers. An example is ammonium nitrate. 5.2 is organic peroxides. An example is methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. So, uh, uh, oxidizers in class 5. So one explosives, two gases, three liquid, four solid. Five oxidizers. Class 6, we do it by division. 6.1 is poison, that's inhalation hazard, like potassium cyanide. And 6.2, infectious substances like anthrax virus. So 6.1, we have poison. 6.2 looks like biological. Class 7 is radioactive 
um, that's the name of the class or division, and uranium is an example. So you have one explosives, two gases, three liquids, four solids, five oxidizers, six is poison and biological, seven is radioactive, class eight is corrosives, and an example of that is battery fluid. Class nine is miscellaneous hazardous materials. That's other stuff that's hazardous. An example is polychlorinated biphemils, which are uh, abbreviated PCBs. PCB. So we have class one explosives, two gases, three liquids, four solids, five oxidizers, six are poison or biological, seven is radioactive, eight is corrosive, nine is uh, other uh, hazardous materials, and then ORMD or ORMD are other related materials, not necessarily hazardous, you know, other related material domestic, like food flavorings or medicines. Okay, in the uh, next video, I plan to pick up with the append Appendix A to 49 CFR 172.101. Uh, sorry, thank you for your patience.